We're in the Vaughn Woods in Hollowell, foraging for mushrooms. After traversing only about 30 yards or so off the trail, we've already hit the jackpot. The thing about black trumpets, they can blend in so well to the leaf litter. And when you see them, it's just like a, you, I jump up and down with joy. Our guide, Greg Marley, harvests a few, dropping them into a paper bag. He plans to cook with them and bring some to an upcoming class he's teaching. I mean, those I leave, they're getting too mature. Marley has been teaching and leading foraging workshops for more than 30 years, and he's written two books about mushrooms. Mushrooms mean so much to my life in terms of my accessing nature in a really healthy way, in terms of delicious food. It's an intellectual pursuit, you know, to engage my mind in, in research. It's a way of sharing passions around the world. It's a way of pulling together a community, a community of people that are interested in mushrooms here in Maine, here in the United States, across the world. More than anything else, it's a way into nature. Maine is home to more than 2,000 different species of mushrooms, and more are discovered every year. So when you compare that to the several hundred birds or the three or 400 plant species, the abundance and the diversity is huge. The mushrooms found poking out of brush or on the underbelly of dead trees are just the tip of the wild, mostly underground, and largely mysterious universe of fungi. All mushrooms are fungi, but not all fungi. In fact, most fungi are not mushrooms. Fungi and mushrooms are essential for the health of forests. And as the most forested state in the country, they play a big role in Maine's natural world. There's a lot of mushrooms that we call saprobes, they rot things. And it's their job to rot the dead leaves and needles and twigs and logs to recycle the nutrients that get bound up in the plant tissue. So they're undertakers for plants. There's hundreds of mushrooms that grow symbiotically with trees and other plants. More than 90% of our green plants require those symbiotic relationships. They're called mycorrhizal. And without them, our forests would languish. This mycorrhizal network communicates, exchanges nutrients, and allocates resources through mycelium, tiny threads that wrap around roots and connect individual plants and trees together. Some researchers compare this network to the human brain's neural pathways, or the internet's connectivity. We are finding great mushrooms in just a very small area. Marley discovers oyster mushrooms growing on a nearby tree and yellowfoot chanterelles popping out of the brush. Marley says these mushrooms are a great starting point for beginner foragers in Maine. I think everybody should look and discover the foolproof few for their area. Um, and in, across all of Maine and New England, golden chanterelles and the yellowfoot chanterelles, the black trumpets, the oyster mushrooms, the larger puffballs, those are easy foolproof mushrooms. Foragers can find around 200 edible mushrooms in Maine, but another 200 or so are known to be toxic, Marley says. And some people, unfortunately, have said, oh, a mushroom that beautiful must be good to eat. And they've gotten very, very ill. So no shortcuts. Learn your mushrooms. Mushrooms are growing in popularity in Maine. People forage them in the woods, cook tasty meals. Some are even growing their own. And others are exploring the potential health benefits. See that? In Westbrook, Lewis Giller is foraging for a pheasant back mushroom to bring back to the lab where he works, a company called North Spore. Yeah, all right. Oh, wow. It, my knife slides right in, which is a great sign. It means this mushroom is totally good for eating. That cut really easily. It's very moist. Stage one complete. We've harvested our Cereoporus squamosis pheasant back mushroom. Uh, the specimen is just perfect. North Spore produces and sells kits to companies, farmers, and individuals who want to grow their own mushrooms. Back at the lab, Giller carefully collects a sample from the mushroom. You don't need much. More than enough right there. The process will eventually create mycelium, which will be expanded on grain, sawdust, or logs that are then used to grow mushrooms. And we're taking that mycelium and we're growing fruiting bodies. And so the fruiting bodies are just that reproductive organ. Those are the mushrooms. Welcome to the mycological world. North Spore started in 2014, and it's grown significantly as mushrooms get more popular in the state. I think mushroom culture in Maine is really strong. We've got a lot of nature here. We are a state that is really independent thinking and forward thinking, and being part of the new like mushroom zeitgeist is right up our alley.
You can find many mushroom lovers foraging in the woods, but we also caught up with a few at the annual Fungi Fest in Portland. We're here because we love mushrooms. Yeah, showing off this beautiful piece of chaga that was gifted to me by a fellow Mainer. I feel like mushrooms play a huge role and kind of reconnecting us as a human species back to the earth. Anything mycelium related, I'm very interested in, not only for the aesthetic, but the medicinal benefits of it. So it's, uh, it speaks to my core self. Here's how popular mushrooms are in Maine. Fungi Fest drew a crowd of nearly 1,500 people this year. The keynote speaker, author and mycologist Christopher Hobbs, believes everyone should incorporate more mushrooms into their diet. They are really a nutritional powerhouse and one of the most complete foods that we can eat. We've known as a culture and historically for hundreds of years that mushrooms are good for you. We know that people who integrate mushrooms into their diet on a regular basis live longer. Marley hikes out of the woods after what he says was a successful day, gathering plenty of mushrooms to cook with and use in his upcoming classes. Attitudes about collecting and using mushrooms, totally cultural. America for a long time was mycophobic. We feared mushrooms. And we're on this trajectory very fast to embracing them for food, for medicine, for expansion of the mind. So there's this excitement that's out there that is palpable. And we can catch a small glimpse of this energy if we just take a stroll through the Maine woods. For Borealis, I'm Esther Pratt-Kiley.